Hey guys, so I need your help. My name is Alexa Shaw, a local poet, and I'm sitting here trying to write a poem to pass time, but I can't seem to think of a word that rhymes with climb. Slime, prime, showtime. 12 years old, a young girl comes across the powerful words of Maya Angelou. Throughout the years, she continues to find inspiration by Maya's life. Now fast forward to today, 15 years later, that young girl is still on fire, but now she's the one inspiring others. We are so excited to introduce you to spoken word artist Alexis Shaw of Seaford. How you doing, Alexis? I'm great, thank you. How are you? Oh, I'm great. So I'm so excited to talk to you. So Maya Angelou, first tell us what, what was it about her that inspired you? Maya Angelou, as you know, she is just a centerpiece for poetry. Um, I've always loved her. Um, growing up, I would watch her documentaries and different times when she would spoke, speak at different events. And I just love her quiet spirit. And I also love that she's very knowledgeable. You know, she's coming from a different time frame where they went through different racial experiences, mm -hmm. um, as we sometimes see today. So it was just growing up, it was very impacting to see her, you know, because growing up as a young black girl, looking up to her yeah. was, you know, just amazing. Yeah. And you started reciting poetry at 12 years old? Yes, ma'am. That is incredible. So how has the spoken word had an impact on your life? Well, I believe that poetry is a little different from spoken word. Poetry is something that's on paper. Mm -hmm. The spoken word is to actually speak what you write, speak what you feel. Mm -hmm. And I believe it's impacted me because when I speak it, it continues to heal different areas of my life mm -hmm. just by speaking it out, you know, because reading it on paper and speaking it is a little different. So spoken word has definitely impacted me on a good level because, you know, by speaking different things, I'm able to heal and I'm able to see um, the benefits of what I've spoken. I love that because I've never really thought about the difference between the speaking it. I think that's so cool. Now, you wrote your first book last year? I did. I did. <laughs> I know they're excited. In my book, I actually have it with me right mm -hmm. now. Um, it's titled Black Woman, a poetry book about a black woman's perspective. Um, and it's just about my life, you know, in a nutshell. It's about different experiences that I've gone through in life about my love life, how I found my husband, my daughter, beautiful baby girl, um, and just different experiences that I've had being a young black girl in America. That so um, it's available on Amazon and I did publish it last year. So I was very excited and it's a big accomplishment of mine. I bet it's amazing. Now, and you say poetry is healing, right? Yes, ma'am. How, how so? I believe that poetry heals again because when you speak it when you read it off of the paper you're able to um, think about the words that's on the paper and you can apply it to your life my motto has always been the same that poetry heals um, you know the uh, young Amanda Gorman that we've seen all over the country here lately she's been performing her poetry across across the nation and um, different people have said that just hearing her voice and the power in it the passion has healed them so I definitely believe that poetry is able to heal you yeah you must have been so fired up on inauguration day when you saw her definitely I was tuning up the TV was turned up to its max and I was just so excited to watch it that is awesome and so and you also you also encourage people people to write down what they're feeling, right? I do, yes ma'am. Um, I've been in different platforms, um, weddings, funerals, different church events, as well as black history events, and daily on my Facebook page, Lexi writes, I have encouraging phrases, um, a lot of my poetry is on there, and also Listen, inspirational baby, speeches, so that others can know that poetry God does heal, and that there is a way out of anything that you're going through. I love that. And you're going to stick around for us next because you're going to perform your poetry, your spoken word for us, right? Yes. All right. I can't wait. You stick around. We'll be right back. You are watching Del Marva Life and prepare to be inspired by the poetry of spoken word artist Alexis Shaw. Alexis, set this up for us today. What are you, what are you doing for us? Yes, of course. Well, today I'll be performing one of my poems um, entitled That Black Man is Beautiful. And it's actually featured in my book, Black Woman, a poetry book about a perspective from a black woman's perspective. Um, and it's about black love. So I hope you guys enjoy it. And again, it's called That Black Man is Beautiful. Perfect. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Alexis Shaw. That black man is beautiful. His hair tangled, kinky, knotted. 
He's embracing our roots within each root. They stare at his hair, but who cares? Because all that matters is that he is wearing our culture. That black man is beautiful. His eyes, they shine, beam in love so bright that even I had to step back before I went blind. I've looked into his eyes and I have found his soul. Optimism and passion in a world so cold telling me that it will be just fine. Even when he grows old, his eyes will still shine dangerously, capturing my mind because that black man is beautiful. His heart, it beats. It beats one, two, three. And though he loves the world, it only beats for me. He's caring for the lost. With his fingers crossed, he'll help defrost my heart. That black man is beautiful. His arms so strong, keeps warm all that's cold. He makes me feel safe when he holds my hands. Arms that lift mountains of pains, even when he strains his veins, still remain pumping, pumping the blood of love. That black man is beautiful. His feet has walked through journeys that I will never know. He's traveled through heights that I will never go. How does he do it? Glory be to God because his feet has never found rest. Yet he passes each test without fear, without resources. And no, I don't want to belittle or make feminine his ways by calling him beautiful. But his approach to life, the power inside, his love for Christ, his hope that flies like a butterfly are the things that make him beautiful. And I know that society likes to point out examples of black men that aren't so eloquent. But I'm here today to say that our black men are not dangerous. They're doctors, great fathers, great husbands, great brothers. Our black men, they are beautiful. Thank you.